better than my mom. How does it feel being 45? I can go with that. <laughs> Mum's got a little fragrance. <laughs> yeah, you'll either love it or you hate it. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome back to my channel and to another vlog. I think I'm going to make this like a week vlog, a weekly vlog, I think that's what they're called. Sorry if it's really windy. Basically, I am outside Buckingham Palace. You might be like, Luke, have you moved? No, I haven't. Just um, do seem to be spending a lot of time at the Queen's Gaff as of late. Um, look who I've got. Come on in. Come on in. My mum's in town. Um, it's my mum's birthday today. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Today is March 10. 2019, 20, not 19. Wow, 2020, Wait, not a year off. <laughs> My mum's turned 60 today, which is wonderful. <laughs> she hasn't, I'm not gonna reveal her age, but she's not 60. No. Judging by that death glare that I just got, she's probably gonna punch me in a second. <laughs> we have had a lovely day, but we had a lovely lunch. Mum got the train around midday, and then we're off to have a lovely birthday. Cocktail. Cocktail, we're having a cocktail, two or three cocktails. Um, and then we're gonna have a lovely birthday dinner in ZZ's. And then I just surprised mum as one of her presents. That we're gonna go see The Lion King tomorrow, which is really exciting. Um, and then we're also gonna to go to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. And then we've got a gin tour book. It's a very event. Beep, 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 beep. It's a very eventful and busy couple of days. Well, it's not gonna be busy. I saw, I saw in my peripheral vision. I was like, oh, she, there she blows. <laughs> Left. Indicate. That's right. Yes, it is. Sorry, it's because I'm looking up here and I'm going left. It's a very busy part of town. Anyway, we've just got off at Victoria and having a lovely little stroll through the mall. Um, I've just given mum a bit of a history lesson about the Commonwealth Games. Not the Commonwealth Games, just the Commonwealth. Basically, the Queen's flying her Commonwealth flag behind. Um, it's just a very nice, nice, pleasant afternoon. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go get some cocktails, have some delicious dinner. Probably have an early night. I've got a bit of a gym class in the morning. I might vlog that actually, depending on how awake and functional and alive I am afterwards, because I'm probably not going to be. And then we've got a lovely day tomorrow. So I'll pick the camera up as and when. But I hope you're all doing well. And I hope you're all enjoying the vlogs. Thank you so much for all of the love recently on the videos. It is always appreciative. And you all seem to love my mum, which I don't know why. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> she's rather special, bless her. Yeah, yeah. No, we're going to have a lovely time. Zara's joining us as well. She finishes work at six, so she should be coming in like an hour and a bit. It's in a very loud pub, it's on the Thames, it's lovely. Um, it's called, I think it's called the Brewer's Arms. Um, basically, me and Mum have walked from Victoria all the way along through Buckingham Palace, along the Thames, to where we're going to have dinner. But we've stopped off at pubs along the way because apparently that's the best way to do it. So we're having a little beer and a fruity cider. So we are in ZZ's now having a bit of a celebratory, celebratory, Celeb celebratory, celebratory birthday dinner. I have gone for a Aperol spritz, very much a summer drink, but I enjoy it anyway. Well, this is the view we've got from outside, and it's uh, this is why I love coming to ZZ's on South Bank. Zara's finished work. Say hello. Hey, hey, hey. Um, that's not your drink. <laughs> Zara's gone for water. Um, Zara's gone for a passion fruit teeny without the tree because this annoys her every time. I'm just gonna put that in for the photograph. But this is passion fruit teeny without the tree. And then um, Mum's gone for a a what? Raspberry and prosecco. Raspberry and prosecco. Also without the tree. Without the, where is the tree? Oh, oh okay, cool. In the forest. <laughs> The one thing I love about ZZ's is that you can come and make enemy vegetarians. We've ordered loads of the dishes that we love. It's got a chicken out. It's a dream. So yeah, we're gonna have a lovely, lovely little, well, there we are. Lovely little uh, birthday dinner. And um, I'll catch you guys once we have food. The mains have arrived. We've gone for a lovely, like, vegetarian spicy, oh. <laughs> Like a spicy vegetarian pizza, um, and then we've gone for a pelo polo rosso without the polo. This is a chicken, and Mum's gone for a uh, king prawn linguine. Yeah, wow, I did that a good memory. Yeah. And we're having a glass of rosé as well because it's Mum's birthday, and why the heck not? Hello, 
everybody? Good, well, I'm saying good morning, it's it's the afternoon. So it is a new day to day. Today is Wednesday the 11th and we are in Central again. I had a gym class this morning. I didn't vlog it, I was very tempted. I'm very glad I didn't vlog it because I threw up at the gym class. It was um, savage. Good, feel great, but absolutely intense. Um, oh, actually, let me quickly show you. We're walking past the Ritz and look, they've got all the daffodils out. Spring is in the air. It's an absolutely beautiful day in London today. <laughs> all right, they need water and you do it then, ma'am. Yeah, it's a beautiful day in London today. Sun is shining. So yes, we're having a bit of a, um, a meander around Central today. Mum's got her um, John Malone bag here. As a birthday present to her, I've got her little voucher. So we're going to head into the John Malone store on Regent Street and just going to pick out a new fragrance. Love John Malone, so does Mum. Wow, well, I hope you do. I do, I do. <laughs> and then we're just going to have a little shop around, have a little look, and then, um, what? Oh, oysters. Um, and yeah, we've got dinner booked this evening at uh, Gordon Ramsay's Head and Street Kitchen. So that was a little present to my mum. We're also going to see the Lion King. I'm very excited. Um, yeah, it was with Red Letter Days. They very kindly provided some vouchers for the whole experience as part of their Mother's Day thing. So if you do want to check those out, I'm going to be linking it down below. But um, yeah, we've got a really lovely day. Just not really have any agenda. Just have a little wonder, which is quite exciting, isn't it? Yes. My mama. Well, How does it feel being 45? I can go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> we just walked past this beautiful cherry blossom tree. And the blue skies, I well and truly feel like spring is in the air, guys. I'm not going to lie. This is truly beautiful. We're just in the John Malone store and Mum's going to pick out a fragrance. I've just recommended the new one that's came out, the Vetiver and Golden Vanilla, which I absolutely love. It's one of the cologne intense. And they've got so much lovely things in here. See, I love that. So we just nipped into the John Malone store. Um, very hen handy, very helpful, handy sales assistant. And they're absolutely lovely. I love that store. Um, Mum sprayed the English Pear and Freesia, which I've heard is beautiful. Very nice. But, just to try to limit the edition, what was it? It was part of the archive collection. With fragrances, whenever you buy a quite an expensive fragrance that is has lots of different notes in it, I always say, spray it on your skin and have a little wonder. Let your body warm up, let everything move, and then assess whether you actually really enjoy it because it develops so much. Let's go and have the coffee that we said we're going to have, and then we'll go back. mum has got a little fragrance. Woo! Look at you! <laughs> you happy? I'm a happy yeah. bunny. So we accidentally just walked into the John Malone store and they're having like a press social media event. Um, so those women who were, you know, I was like, oh, they're quite loud. Yeah, they're, there was Giovanna Fletcher there. Giovanna Fletcher is an author, book author. You know McFly? Do you remember McFly? Oh, yeah, yeah. Tom from McFly, that's yeah. her wife, his wife. Is it? Fleur de Force, who's a huge oh, YouTuber. She's just stood next to me. Them. I was about walking, I was like, Wow! <laughs> I mean, the grand scheme of things, what I do and compared to what they do is just insane, but yeah. So we've just came through Argyll Street and they are having the Princess Trust Awards 2020. So there's a massive influx of people out trying to see some celebrities walking down the red carpet. So we've come to a place called Ethos, which I absolutely love. It's in central London and it's just such a nice place to come for like veggie and vegan options. It's so healthy. Mum's obviously never been, so she's tucking in, but they've got loads of different options to choose from. This looks so good, oh my god. Literally got an array of things like curry cauliflower, sweet potato, uh, baba ganoush, hummus, pesto egg, just all the goodness. Mum's gone for a little, you've gone for quite similar, yeah. Amazing, let's dig in. So we have just nipped into Primark, we've got Mum behind me, where is she, where is she, there she is. Primark have very kindly got in touch and we're going to be filming a little video for their Instagram all about Mother's Day, which is very exciting. So I've roped in Mum. So we've been, um... Sam, your mother. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> your choice. <laughs> to be fair, they did offer it if you want to get like a friend or someone like that, but um, someone who you're appreciative on Mother's Day. So no, the idea of a mother is very, um... Well, it's different for everyone, isn't it? So yeah, we just nipped into Primark and I got uh, a little outfit for myself and an outfit for Mama. And now we're going to go to a place called Cream, which if you remember and you've been watching me quite a while, is the cookie shop in Soho and it's absolutely delightful and I'm taking Mama along because she deserves it and she needs to experience what it is to have the joy of putting a cream cookie in and around your mouth. So this is the place in question. This is Cream or Creme. Really big cookies. 
and everything in between. The hype is real. Mum's not even waiting, she's like, I'm getting involved. Thank you. Mum is about to experience possibly one of life's joys. Small, delicate, slightly overpriced, of course. Look at her, she's worse than I am. <laughs> Get that photo. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? I've gone for the white chocolate and miso. I've heard good things. So I'm gonna win. One banana and one chocolate. I can see why I've heard good things. Salty, balanced out with the sweetness of the white chocolate, but then a little bit of like heat afterwards. Mmm, oh my god, that's good. She likes it, man. Mum's just silent. That is when you know someone is enjoying their cookie. Mum's saying I look like a spectre gadget. I actually do. I've got my trench coat on and it's bottled up. But I did say I love it. So this is the menu that um, is come with the Red Letter Days booking. So basically, it's an online platform that you can book vouchers and experiences for. Obviously, Mother's Day is coming up, and it just coincided with Mother's Day as Mum's birthday as well. So I thought, why not do this? So it's a really nice concept. So you get a complimentary cocktail, starter, main course, and a dessert, all in the price. Um, and I will link all of this down below if you guys want to check it out. So our first course has arrived and we've gone for a very lovely roasted tomato soup. It's one of my favourites and we've ordered um, just a little glass of the French wine. So I have gone for the rigatoni that I got last time which is one of my favourite things with the oyster mushrooms and mum's gone for a delicious looking beef burger and some chips. Very, very nice indeed. I'm so excited again. Seriously? Mum, she said her burger's better than some steaks she's ever had and this pasta there's just something about the like creamy like oyster mushrooms and the rigatoni it is cooked beautifully and the pasta's made in house as well which is really nice and these are the desserts we've gone for this evening we've gone for a sticky toffee pudding which is my all-time favorite dessert and then this which is like a sorbet with like pineapple carpaccio and kiwi which is very very nice and here we are, this is where we're going this evening. I'm so, so excited. We're gonna go see The Lion King. I've wanted to see this for so long. I'm so excited. So we made it. I'm so excited, we literally made it with like three minutes to spare. <laughs> and we, three minutes to spare, we spent that time to get wine. <laughs> Cheers, ma'am. Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. So today is Thursday and um, it's a pretty chill day. They haven't actually doing much. The Lion King, I actually didn't even end yesterday properly. The Lion King was absolutely incredible. We had like the best time. Sorry, we're in Sainsbury's currently. We're um, getting some ingredients for dinner this evening. Um, we'll head on up. Yeah, Lion King was absolutely 10 out of 10. I recommend that to anyone who's coming to London. It was so good. It's the evening. Well, today we're doing a gin tour, which is very exciting. We are, what are we, what are we doing? We're making mince and dumplings for dinner which is one of my favourite, favourite dinners that is a very North Eastern thing. Do we need anything down here? So yeah, we're making mince and dumplings. Anyone who's like from the North East knows mince and dumplings is the one. I absolutely love it. Um, I'll show you what we make it this evening if you've never made it before. It's very nice. It's like a, um, like a goulash, similar. Anyway. Um, but yeah, we're just insane to just getting some bits. I've just grabbed one of the um, reusable produce bags. They're 30 pence and it's just better to be like on your veggies because you can reuse them every single time, which is so handy. Um, yeah, we're making mince and dumplings. We're going to pop it in a slow cooker and then have it this evening when we're back from a gin tour. So it's like blipping away and getting all lovely. I'm actually really impressed that we managed to get our hands on this. Basically, we went to Sainsbury's. They had absolutely no quantities at all. So let's go to Iceland where this was £5 for two packs, but I think we're only going to use wow. one, aren't we? So we can pop another one in the freezer. Uh, we've got some carrots, um, four carrots to have alongside it with some potatoes. I want to do roast potatoes instead of mash. We're going to do Swede as well. We're going to do, this is turnip, no? This is turnip? Turnip. Swede. So this is Swede, a, sw a southern word, because I call it Swede now. <laughs> we might do this as like a mash anyway. Onions for, obviously, to go in there. Um, mince and dumplings. Some grape granules, 
some savoy cabbage. So we've just got the slow cooker out and um, mum's gonna peel some carrots and potatoes and also chop the swede. And we're gonna put it in one of the pans just so we can like boil it up um, when we come back from the gym tour. So into the frying pan I've just put a bit of olive oil and then I'm just gonna add the chopped white onion. It's just, I, whenever I do slow cooker recipes I always fry the onion off just because I feel like it helps it soften down ever so slightly. So I'm gonna pop that on with a little bit of sea salt and just soften that down. Okay, so into the frying pan, I'm gonna add the corn mince. You don't really need to cook the mince, it's more so just to brown it off, just to add a bit of, oh, bit of flavor. Sorry, I'm really struggling to do this one hand. <laughs> so the mince is in the pan now, and I'm just gonna soften this down. And then I'm gonna add, mum's just said crumble in one vegetable stock here into the pan just to add a little bit more flavor. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop down here, but basically I'm adding in the corn onion mix into the slow cooker. Like I say, you don't really have to do this, but um, it just helps with the flavor, I think, just to get it all kind of gone. Okay, so now that everything's in the pan, what I'm gonna do is add some vegetable gravy granules, not a lot, because you can add some more later on, maybe like that much. Gravy granules are really weird. And then some recently boiled kettle water and just pile that in. And then we just need to turn this on, I'd say like a medium heat. Just do its thing while we're away, and then we're gonna zhuzh it up when we're back. So we've come to a pub called The Bedford, which is like a local in our area. We actually came here for New Year's Eve, which is really funny, and it's um, obviously a lot more calm than what it was on New Year's Eve. But yeah, it's a really nice place to do like little lunch bits, nibbles, that kind of thing. But um, our gin tour is at half past three, so we've got like a couple of hours to just chill, sit, have a lovely glass of wine, and then um, ready for some gin tis. You excited? Gin chin to the gin gin. So lunch has just arrived. I've gone for a cheeky little halloumi wrap with like guacamole and roasted red pepper and a little bit of a salad, but I'm gonna share the salad with mum and I'm gonna share some of mum's chips with her wrap as well. gin distillery. I'm very, very excited to be here. It's actually really cool to have a gin distillery that is based in South London because obviously that's where I live. It's really cool and I love it. It's amazing. It's huge. Let me show you. So we've just walked in and this is where they obviously have some of their copper distills and then this is all of their retail stuff that they have. So they've got all of the Heyman's gin here in different types. You've got slow gin, dry gin, old tom gin, gently rested gin, royal duck gin, and then lots of the smaller varieties. I recently discovered this. This is a great option for any of you guys out there who are maybe looking to have a, a bit less alcohol. So this is the same 20%, um, actually no, 43% volume gin, but you do a thimble measure for it, which is interesting. So you basically have a smaller measure, but it tastes exactly like a stronger gin. It's really cool. Mum, it's one each, yeah? <laughs> Just one. Chin chin, man. Chin chin, chin chin. I feel like we've done a lot of this in this vlog. I am um, just gonna say now, gin and tonic is probably mine and my mum's favorite thing. I, 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 yeah, we, we, we drink other spirits, like wine and that's spirits and alcohols, but. Gin, yeah, gin is gin is our thing. It used to be, um, it used to be quite a common drink to gin, didn't it? Like, you drank gin maybe. It's on trend now because they charge in the. A lot for it, yes, but gins kind of became very popular again. I mean, it has been, but I'm, I'm a bit. Oh. Have you had it for some? So we have just finished our Heyman's gin tour. It was absolutely incredible, it was really informative. The um, chap, John, was brilliant. He gave us a full in-depth explanation about how gin's made, how Heyman's is a little bit different, the history of Heyman's, all of that good stuff. I've got myself a um, London Dry Heyman's tonic. Um, it's fantastic, and we are just in the shop area now. And um, if you guys want to check out this whole experience, I'm going to link it in the description box down below. If you're ever in London or in like the area, you can check it out and book it. It's um, I think it's like you said, number 20 of things to do in London. It's not very often you get an actual fully operational distillery in London, South London. So it's brilliant. I'm going to finish my gin. I'm going to head home and have some dinner. So 
we have just finished our humans gin london tour genuinely i'm not just saying this probably the best gin tour i've ever had i've done three i did one in bombay sapphire one in the cotswolds and um <laughs> We have a slightly intoxicated mother, that's how you know they've done a good job. <laughs> this is located in Ballam in southwest London, easily accessible via the overground or the northern line. Go on southbound if you want to check it out, I'll link it down below. The funny thing is, the, the chap who is doing our um, the tour, he's called John, great guy, said if you do want to check out any of humans in retail and in pubs and restaurants in the area, I'll give you guys a list. And my mum and myself had already been to two of those places, one of them called the Bedford, the other place called the Cyclist, and the third place we were going to go to, it's just here. It's there. What three of eight we've already ticked off pre-tour. <laughs> they um they do two things. They do the tour and they do the sampling table cocktail thing. It's a lovely place. I'd say that's honestly the best. You've never done a gin tour, have you? I've never. She's never done a gin tour. Another one. <laughs> one would recommend that you do sip the gins. Whereas well, my mum is from Durham, northeast England. We don't sip, we guzzle. Or as quaff. <laughs> so we're back home. We made us successfully home. Dream about living in South London. You haven't got brought to commute. Anyway, we're about to make our dumplings. So essentially, it's just it's it's fat to flour. So it's a cakey. It's, I mean, dumplings are pretty much a universal thing. Anyone who's maybe from like Asia might not be the dumpling you have in mind, but we're gonna do it anyway. So in here we have the uh, Torah, which is what has been around since like what the twenties. 1920s, 1930s, it's good stuff. Uh, self and flour, pinch of salt, and I'm just gonna add some cold water in and we're just gonna mix it until it forms like a nice, I'd say like what, like a doughy wet, doughy wet consistency. Let's go for it. So you do a lit little at first. Little at first, give it a stir. God, Nana would be proud. When a lot of people ask me what type of food I like and a typical food that I enjoy eating, it's all about memories and comfort food for me and this was my childhood this would be our like we come home from school it's midwinter it's freezing your hands a bit cold from playing out in the snow you have some bits and dumplings everything's fine and over here we've got some savoy cabbage that's about to be steamed um, we're doing a little carrot and sweet mash and we've got some roast potatoes doing the thing over there as well. So we have just made ourselves a cheeky little, well, it's actually very much inspired where we've just been. This is a slow royale, which is slow gin and champagne. And then we've just put the lovely mincy gravy mix in with corn mince, and mum has got the dough here. So all you do is just pinch a little piece, like that much, roll it into a bowl and just plonk it in. This is as simple as it is. Let me just turn Sarah Bells down. Mm. And then this is made of self-raising flowers, so they like puff up. You can also glaze these, right, with egg wash if you want to make them more golden brown, but we find they do normally go. This is the local one, the biggest in the middle. I am a dumpling. Bubbling. These are what dreams are made of. Well done, ma'am. This dreams are made of. <laughs> so these are the mints and dumplings. They look absolutely amazing, crispy on top, nice and soft in the middle. Soggy bottoms. Soggy bottoms, correct. <laughs> Rose potatoes, carrot mash, uh, no, sorry, carrots and sweet, and some savoy cabbage and extra. Right, let me grab you a drink. Right. So I was trying her first ever okay. mints dumpling. and dumpling. That's so tasty. Mm -hmm. It does taste like a Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, yeah, it's similar with plain flour and yeah. Yeah, but like just my taste buds screams Yorkshire pud. <laughs> Let me have a bit of a soggy bit actually. Yeah, I haven't so tried some soggy. The thing is, I, I mean, I feel like this vlog is literally going to be titled Mints and Dumplings. I've spoken so much about Mints and Dumplings. They're soggy underneath, but they're crispy on top. It's good. Everyone it's... in work was like, I was like, I'm having Mints and Dumplings tonight. And this girl, she lives in Liverpool, and she was like, Yeah, you'll either love it or you hate it. <laughs> I was like, oh. I said, All day I've been like, and then when you put in the videos, I was like, if I hate it, when I spent all this time, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And then when you were cooking it, I was like, mm -hmm. That's it, right, I'm digging, digging. Digging. Okay, right, I'm gonna end this vlog here. Oh, I've got the coffee shakes, man. Oh dear. Food. Mm, food. Not that we haven't had enough of that in this vlog. <laughs> um, yes, I'm going to end this vlog here. I know I called it a weekly vlog, but it's basically been Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today is Friday. Mum's about to grab her train back to Durham. Have you had a lovely time? I've had the best time ever. Thank you so, so much. When we cut the camera, she's like, get me out of here. Oh, bless you. Oh, I love you so much, Mama. I love you, Mum. Um, I've had the, the most loveliest week. It's actually been so nice to just do lots of things that I wouldn't naturally do because it's always just a bit busy. But yeah, I'm gonna pop mum on the train, hopefully the right one, she ends up where she needs to go. <laughs> if you have enjoyed the video, as always, do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I'm gonna leave my handle on the screen. Um, and I'll catch you guys soon in another...
another video in another video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.